Rocket League is one of the most punishing esports in the world. One single mistake can be the difference between winning and losing a game. In this video, I'll help improve your competitive consistency by showing you the do's and don'ts of Rocket League play. For years, Rocket League has operated under the same philosophy. The best team is the one that makes the least mistakes. Developing consistency in your playstyle is the hardest thing to do after you've mastered your core mechanics, but it's an absolute must if you're competing at a high level. For some quick background as to who I am, I'm a competitive player and professional coach for gamers ready, uh, but most of you might know me for scoring the winning goal in goal of the year 2019. I also want to give a quick shout out to Gamers Ready who published this video. If everyone is some one-to-one -one coaching from professionals, written guides or even courses to enrol in, if you're seriously looking to improve, it's the place to go. In order to get a good range of topics covered, I'll be correcting common mistakes from the five cornerstones of play. Mechanics, positioning, rotations, decision making and boost control. We'll start off with everyone's favourite topic, mechanics. For demonstration purposes, the attacker in every one of these situations has great mechanics and can perform whatever routine is necessary in a situation. But just because something is possible, it doesn't mean that you should do it. Think back to a common situation. You've taken a ball up the wall with full control. One defender is applying pressure to you and another is capable of shadowing the backboard. What do you do? Whatever you do, don't try to score. The main priority is to beat the man pressuring you and to try and maintain control as a team. This can be done through a free pass in field, a boom to the opposite side, or an attempt to get past or win a 50-50 with the second defender. If you always aim to score from a 1v2 situation without full control, you'll lose possession more than half of the time against competent defenders, and it's just not worth it. Rocket League is all about playing to the best potential opportunity. Just think about all the great ideas you've never considered because of the greed for a solo play. Improve your mechanics to increase your possibilities, not to constantly try the same routine. Let's move on to boost control. This is possibly the easiest thing to get wrong in competitive 3v3 because players simply don't know what to do when they're offered the ball. Sometimes it's really easy to drift into awkward positions because of how convenient big boost pads are, and sometimes people just don't know how to use the small boost pads to rotate back and forth. Here's the two most important things not to do with your boost. Never take your team's back boost from a near post rotation unless you need it to make a backboard play. It will starve your team in defense and you'll have exactly the same role rotating through that position as your man at the front post, causing low option coverage as a team and maybe even a double commit in future. And now for the unspoken rule. Never wimp out by taking the opponent's back boost if you're locked in defense. It might look extremely convenient at the time, but for your teammates, this is the worst abandonment of support that you can do. Try to learn the paths of small boost pads and learn how to rotate to support your last man after taking them. When it comes to decision making, there's usually one issue that sparks up more than any other. As a second man pressuring the opponents, you should never dive at a challenge you're not 100% sure about, unless there's direct support behind you. It's so painful to sit in agony as a last man, watching your support be helplessly thrown away, only to concede from a 2v1. The better idea as a second man is to shadow the opponent's play until you're confident about a challenge, or confident that your last man can follow up after your challenge. Especially when entering faster paced games, inexperienced competitive players can get drawn into the idea of needing to be fast, but if you're always thinking about how to be fast instead of how to best support your team, you'll be throwing away simple goals from poor wasted challenges. Don't be afraid to look back at your own replays and analyse how you could better your team's defence. For positioning, I want you guys to think quickly about the most common mistake you make in your 3v3 games that lead to an open net. 
Without a doubt, the most common positional mistake in competitive Rocket League is overextending as a third man. Whether you're trying to make that clutch backboard read or trying to lock the opponent's defense in just that little bit longer with high pressure, you're also contributing to this problem. Always consider how safe your defense will be before launching yourself at a ball that you've already been beaten to. It's better to sit a little further back as a third man than it is to be a little too far forward. Finally, let's move on to rotations. In competitive Rocket League, cutting a rotation is a smart idea if your idea has a better potential opportunity and your intentions are obvious to the team. Sadly, 90% of the time in solo queue, that's not always the case. For the sake of convenience, it's extremely common for players to keep challenging and challenging and challenging when locked in the opponent's corner. Even worse than that, I want you guys to imagine a situation. Your teammate is shadowing an opponent who's dribbling out of defense, just a little in front of them. Unfortunately for the second and third man, they have to wait until that guy either stops shadowing or throws in a challenge. And spoiler alert, they never do. All pressure is on you now and support is lost because two players are taking on the same role of shadowing back to the net. Always consider how is best to support your team and try not to tunnel vision towards your own plays. Keep the rotation clean and the support as quick as you can. Now unfortunately, there isn't a quick practical way to implement any of the concepts talked about in this video. Competitive Rocket League is all about recognizing and learning from new situations. The more time you can put into learning about how most effectively to play different situations, the better decisions you'll make in the game. I would advise someone who's struggling to improve to look at their replays before anything else and to tally up and categorize their mistakes. Personally, the five things I categorize and have spoken about today are mechanical, boost control, decision making, positional and rotational mistakes. Physically write down these mistakes and choose the most common ones as improvements to work upon. It's a fundamental piece of analysis I do before my coaching sessions on Gamers Ready. From there, you can dedicate your practice to perfecting that one area, and if you string those minor improvements together, you can begin to make great incremental progress. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you guys found something useful in this video. If you have any questions or thoughts, leave them down in the comments below, and if you haven't already checked out Gamers Ready, you can use any of the links below to find coaches, courses, as well as free guides. You can also join the Discord link to get more involved in the community. Thank you for watching.